Hey everybody, good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Sandra Davis with Women's Network of USA and I am so fortunate tonight to have the beautiful Vonda Driver with us this evening. And Vonda is an ULA coach. And I love that so much because the day that I asked her, well, what does ULA stand for? And she told me, <laughs> I just thought it was the best thing ever because I use that term quite often. As a matter of fact, I don't know how I ever used it. <laughs> Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Is that, that's what it stands for, right? Ooh la la. It is, it is short for me. Ooh la la. I love that. That's creative. <laughs> so thanks for joining me tonight. How are you doing? I and I want to awesome. know, I want you to tell us about yourself. And then I want you to tell us about Ula. Okay. Well, I live in the beautiful Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. Um, currently in, well, I'm house sitting right now, so it doesn't look like I live in an RV. But <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not house sitting, I live in an RV with my two cats. Um, I have three grown children who are all married and have blessed me with seven adorable grands. Oh, so that's a lot of fun. And fortunately, they are all local here. So the, the reason I stay in the Shenandoah Valley is for those grandbabies. <laughs> I was going to say, because then you could get in that RV and you could just go all over the place, I bet. I could. Well, it's an older model. I'm not sure how far I would trust it to go, although it doesn't have many miles on it. So it'd probably be fine. Yeah, I bet you. You need to put a little bit more faith in that. It gets nine um, miles to the gallon. <laughs> You know, it's, I, I know more and more people who are going with RV living. My parents do it six months out of the year and I love it. I think it's great. I, I wish I had an RV. That's on my bucket list. Keep it, has, my husband. it has simplified my life. I will tell you that. Oh, absolutely. I love that. So with that being said, you can work your business probably pretty much from anywhere you want. I can. ULA is definitely an anywhere I want to go kind of business. That is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the ULA coaching. Tell us about their platform. Okay. So ULA was uh, started by a couple of guys, uh, Dr. Dave and Dr. Troy, and they developed this lifestyle, <laughs> this framework, this They're lifestyle cute. framework. They're really cute. And the lifestyle framework is designed to help people develop, uh, develop a life of balance, growth, and purpose in seven key areas of life. Those seven key areas are uh, fitness, finance, family, field, which is your career, faith, friends, and fun. And those are not in any, those are not in order of importance. Uh, finance and fitness are important, but they're not the most important thing. I mean, they're equally, they're all equally important. Every area needs to be um, attended to for us to have a truly balanced life. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, yeah. They all begin with F2, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> but you know what, that's right. I mean, you know what, because if, if let's, let's break that down. You mentioned finance is probably important. Well, a lot of people think money is the most important thing, and it's not. It's not. Because if you don't have health, then you have nothing, right? That's right. And fitness falls under health, and fun falls under health, and a lot of things fall under the health category. Well, health, and health is so much more than diet and exercise health yeah. is mental fitness and health is getting our bodies enough rest which you know the fun category can aid in the fitness category because yeah. when you're having fun you may be doing things that get you active or you may uh -huh. be doing something restful so yeah they're they definitely go hand in hand yeah that's um, awesome what a great course, concept. we are we are social creatures by design so our friends and our family are very important. And if you don't protect those most important relationships in your life, then they can get away from you. And um, one of the things that we deal with is toxic relationships and how to, yeah. and how to minimize the impact of a toxic person in your life. Um, yeah. In life, yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Cause we have all those basic needs, right? We have all those, and it sounds like they've got it covered. So I am going to ask you some three questions, but before we get to those questions, I'm going to okay. ask you more about the ULA. How did you find it? I mean, where did you first find it and how did you decide, you know what, this is, this is something for me. This is what I want to do. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm also a Young Living distributor um, yeah. or brand ambassador, I believe is now the correct term. Um, and the, the ULA guys partnered with 
Young Living for a number of years. Oh, and well, there, were some, there were some there were some oils. And so I met them actually at Young Living Convention. <gasps> and that's where I first heard about oh, the Ula framework. Um, met the guys, ordered the book. Um, and just nice over the years, I just slowly started applying it to my own life before the coaching program even existed. Um, and it really did help me focus on, find the ways that I could improve the areas of my life that I'm weak in. Everybody has one or two areas that they're naturally just good at. And everybody has one or two areas that they're naturally bad at. Um, for, me, <laughs> for me, faith and family is easy. Yes. I always, I mean, I'm, I'm very secure in my faith and family is, it's easy for me to put family number one and drop everything to go take care of my family, but my finances suffer. And <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. No. I'm laughing that I can, <laughs> right. I well, my can finances have suffered over the years. And because my finances are terrible, I don't always, ha I struggle to have enough fun because I'm too busy worrying about making more money so I can. Yeah. But ULA is helping me fix that. I'm still a work in progress. I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I'm better than I was. So it's this, it's finding out where you are right now, where you are is just where you are. It's not who you are. It doesn't define you. Yeah. But if you are willing to honestly look at where you are, then you can, and, and then where you want to go, you can figure out the steps to take in the process. Yeah. And, and that's sort of where a coach comes in as a, as an ULA life coach, it's not my job to tell you how to fix your life. I'm not gonna, there's no prescriptions. There's no, you know, I just magic I pill, work, no magic pill, but I help you talk yourself through where you are and where you want to go and, and how to get there. And sometimes it's just easier to formulate a plan if you've got somebody to bounce it off of and then also you know I provide accountability yeah if, if we sit down in week two and work out a plan for for your fitness and on week three when you come back to talk about family I'm going to say hey how are we doing in the fitness program and you're probably going to want to give me a good report so <laughs> it's just well yeah that's a tough one for me too that, that's yeah, a tough, the, the fitness, finance, fitness. Right. That fitness <laughs> thing. I have to be honest and tell you, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but you know what? That makes a lot of sense. And honestly, I've known you now for a good while. And, um, you know, I consider us good friends, even though we didn't speak for probably all the last <laughs> year. I don't think we did. Did we? I, I don't think, think we did. might have stayed in contact or touched base. Um, but you know, life was a little wackadoodle last year, so it's okay. Well, yeah. And it was extremely busy year for us, but, um, you know, thanks flip-flop during the COVID area, but you know what, I'm going to tell you something. I, I know how earnest you are and how really there's no fluff with you. You're very down to earth. I know that you're very good. If you have any kind of, um, criticism that you would have to share with anybody I know it would come from the heart of constructive you know it would be very good I could see you being an amazing coach I mean I don't know how many clients you have now but honestly I I think that they're probably in the best situation <laughs> having you be their accountability partner or their coach or whatever I can see you really this is a great fit for you and I'm glad that you found something so good I liked what you told me today I liked what you said today because I asked you about the ULA program and you said that, and I'm not, I'm not going to be able to remember your exact words, but you said it's, it's, it's a program that they give you a lot of content. They help you share that content with other people. They just don't teach you something and drop you like a hot rock and right. expect you to go do your own free form coaching. They still mentor you and show you the way and Correct. Show when I, show when I have a, yeah, when I have a client that goes through the coaching program, they get a lot of content from ULA. They get videos from the ULA guys. They get workbooks. 
all of that stuff is done for me by the fine folks at ULA. Yeah. Um, so you have, that saves you a lot of time in creating your own content. Yes. And cre- creating, you know, everything. And But you're following their, their program. Right. Their and their program has been proven to work. They have so many testimonials of people who have radically transformed their lives, yeah. who have paid off huge amounts of debt, who have lost tons of weight or, you know, whatever. There's just stories always coming in. For, for Dr. Troy, when he started using the ULA framework, he was $750,000 in debt um, and had young children. And he didn't, you know, he did, he wanted to be out of debt. He wanted to, re- he retired at, at 42. He used wow. the principles of ULA to get out of debt and get himself set up so that he could retire from his doctor, his chiropractic practice. Yeah. And, but he did it in a way that um, allowed him to still have fun with his children and not, I mean, he wasn't working a gajillion hours a week during this period, but he applied those principles. Yeah. Um, For, for Dr. Dave, um, also a chiropractor, he was sort of the opposite of, of Troy in that he waited until he was bankrupt and getting divorced and living in a hotel driving his be- mama's beat up car and I'm not telling stories he doesn't tell to everybody in the world I mean you get the yeah. book and it's in there so um he waited until he was in that bad a shape before he got back on board and started reapplying I mean he knew the ULA principles he had lived it for a while and then stopped mm-hmm. um, but when he hit rock bottom he got back in touch with Troy, who said, dude, <laughs> get your, get do back this. into ULA. Yeah. And so as, as, as the ULA principles, as the framework helped him pull himself back up out of this abyss that he found himself in, his life's mission became sharing this, yeah, this framework we, with the world because yeah, it I would imagine. absolutely works. It absolutely I would imagine works. if you there's something that's good going on in your life. You want to share with everybody else and make right. sure that their lives are good too. You know, seriously. Well, it sounds like an amazing program. It really is. So let's go ahead. And you might've already answered this question now that I think about <laughs> it. Sorry. Um, I have three questions here and one of them is a sticky question, but you did, you already answered this one. I, I was going to ask you, I, I usually put them on a piece of paper because I try not to ask the same people the same questions. Um, but it, I said, why did you choose the business you're in? Why did you choose this business? Why did you, or let's just, maybe not, maybe um, why did you choose ULA? But why did you decide all of a sudden, and it probably wasn't all of a sudden, but what made you decide to be a coach? What made you, before you, maybe it was the program, I don't know. What, did you, what made you decide, you know what? I can do this. Well, I mean, I had, I know, lots of people who are coaches who are wonderful people um and but i never was in any way interested in the way that they did coaching what i call free form um where there's not really a structure and it's fine i mean these people do great work with their coaching i'm not bashing it at all but that was not something that i would have been comfortable doing um the ULA and ULA coaching has only been a thing for a little over a year. So um, when I found out about the ULA coaching program and I found out how much they provide to their coaches to make the coaching process, I want to make sure that when my, when I have a client, I want to make sure that they're going to get results. And because I have the framework backing me up or I'm backing up the framework, however you want to look at it. I know that my client, if they show up and participate and apply the principles of the ULA framework, they will see results. Yeah. So you've already got the, you've already got the backing, you've got the, um, the scientific backing behind it, that the framework actually works. Yes. And you, and it gives you credibility also. I mean, you've, 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 you've learned a lot in the last year 
And uh, prior to that too, because you said you'd been connected with these people, you know, for a long time since you've been, right. you know, involved with Young Living and everything. So that's amazing. That's a, that's really uh, says a lot. It says a lot. Um, scientific backing means everything really to a lot. <laughs> so aim into that. All right. So the next question, this is a good one. What are the most important things you are looking for in the next role of your life? I am looking to be able to release the day job that keeps me stuck in an office <laughs> with <laughs> no windows. <laughs> with no windows. Oh um, my goodness. I want the freedom to go hang out with my grandkids anytime, obviously with their parents' consent, but you know, a lot like, more than grandma, I do. Go to grandma. A lot more than I do now. <laughs> um, well, I mean, that's so good because guess what? That is what everybody wants, I think. What everybody wants. And in, today's, want. in today's digital world, there's really not any reason why it can't be done. I mean, the job that I work at a desk in an office could actually be figured out how to do it remotely, but- Yeah, if they change their process, cost, maybe a little I bit. I mean, it would cost the company some money to set it up, but it could be done. Um, yeah, but just think not, how much, you know what the problem is with all this digital stuff and us all working from our homes or offices or our RVs, by the way. Right. Um, you know, it really is going to hurt the commercial real estate industry. It already has. Yes, it is. I know. It already and, has. But at the end of the day, trade-offs for everything. Yeah, but at the end of the day, um, you know what? You're right. It's times are a change in, and I think it's still a wonderful opportunity. I mean, if any company can do it, then I think it should be the way of the world, to be honest with you. Yes. So I concur. Mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful idea. And I want to jump on that bandwagon with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, honey. <laughs> okay, so here's the third and final question. And this is my, I like to call this the sticky question. Okay. Ask me the hard stuff. The question is, hmm. Okay, how did you recover from your last failure? What did you do? Did I recover from my last failure? Did you have any failures that you can recollect that you recovered from? And if so, what did you do? I I even think I already know a story for you. But go ahead. <laughs> what story do you want me to talk about? Because I'm not. Oh, not I remember once this dairy farmer lady had a husband that just didn't want to do a dang thing. Oh. <laughs> That's, that's like 10 year old news. That wasn't um, your failure though. <laughs> no. Um, I, I really don't dwell a whole lot on what would be perceived as failures. I believe that we go through challenges in life because that's how we learn. If life were always easy, we would have no motivation to change anything or get up off the couch. I mean, when we trip and fall, then we know that there's something there we got to work on. So it's only a, it's only a failure if you let, let it, it keep you, you down. Right. right. As long as you get back up again and you learn I something from the process. I, I surround myself with some of the smartest women in the whole wide world. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, what you just said is absolutely true because you know what? It's going to, things are going to happen in our life anyway, right? Absolutely. And don't we have to learn to deal with them? I mean, if we don't learn, it makes us stronger when we deal with adverse issues. You, you get stronger, you learn something. Next time you come into a situation like that, you'll deal with it differently. And, and then it's, then you haven't failed. You have learned and growed, mm -hmm. growed grown. <laughs> Yes, I speak it English. Is true. <laughs> well, you know what? That is an amazing answer. And I have to tell you that um, it doesn't surprise me that you were able to come up with something so good. Because <laughs> I, I didn't share those questions with her before I asked them. But no, I don't care with anybody. 
But truly, you know what? We all live a life that, you know, we go through things, we go to ups and downs and you just have to learn how to manage. And what you said, what is your word that you said earlier? Balance. Balance. And I'm sure that your ULA program has helped you along the way with the balance of those seven key areas. It has. And like I said, I'm a work in progress. No, and all, all ULA coach, all coaches anywhere. I mean, we're, none of us are perfect. So I will fully admit that I don't have all seven areas of my life where I want them to be. But if you're not growing, you're dying. So I want to always be growing. So yeah, yeah, always always there a goal. Yeah, I agree with that too. You can't, you know, we haven't all experienced everything there is to experience either. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot of things that we still have that we haven't experienced. So you never know what's going to happen with with whatever, whatever experience comes your way. If it's an adverse one, you need to learn to deal with it. Right. You know, or like you said, if there's things that you're not good at in one area, then you always can improve in those areas. What, you know, Well, I don't know who said it first, but a very wise thing that I have heard recently is everybody was bad at whatever they're good at. Now they were bad at it the first time they did it. So if you want to be, if you want to be good at something, you have to allow yourself to be bad at it. You first. have to practice a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you have to it now. Bit. Well, okay. Let's take an example. The Wright brothers. So they were bad at flying at first because they, they did. First, yeah. The first time they built an airplane, the first one the or first one that they did and they finally got it off the ground only went like a hundred yards. Right. Like, it took them a long time like, to make it. It went like 50, yard, 50 yards or 50 yeah. feet, maybe, or hundred feet or something. It went very short distance. And but they made it off the ground. <laughs> how many different models of the light bulb did Edison try before he actually got one that worked? Yeah, this is if true. If they would have given up at the first failure, we would not have airplanes or like or light bulbs. So this is true. This is so true. So interesting. It makes you really think that, you know what, there is, there is, a, I do have a chance. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> we don't need to, we don't need to invent the light bulb again. You no, know, the but, best story too, and I wish I could find the article. Um, there's a great, there's a great story out there about all of Abe Lincoln's failures. It includes so much, so many, I mean, really bad things that happened in his life. Right? And how he came out of it and how he persevered and how he, you know, succeeded and, you know, and sadly he died. But at the end of the day, I mean, he went through some really, really bad stuff. Well, and And, when you, you see somebody in the news and all they're talking about is their success. And it seems like they just skyrocketed to fame overnight. Well, yeah, but you don't know what happened in the months and years and maybe decades leading up to that. 15 minutes of fame oh so yeah oh yeah definitely things things don't just happen yeah you have to, people work very hard at things they practice continually and then they still have bumps in the road exactly you know i mean then they're still faced with adverse things and they learn to either they learn you know i, I know i'm in the golf world and the one i think of the most is tiger woods look right. how look how amazing of an athlete he is and all he's done i mean you cannot turn on the golf channel without seeing something about Tiger Woods. In fact, when he plays in a tournament, that's who they focus on. They <laughs> focus on him. We call it Tiger TV. But right. look how many failures he's had since his successes. Right. You know, and he's still working his way out of problems, right. never ending. And it's always a, pro- you know, and he's probably his own worst enemy. But at the end of the day, he he's amazing. He's an amazing person. So you're always learning. You're always growing. You might always have mistakes. You might always, you know, but well, if you can't figure we're all, out, always a hundred percent human. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Good way of putting it too. Well, you know, Vonda, I really do love you lots and um, you mean a lot to me. And I'm so thankful that you're here, part of this group again. Glad and um, I can't wait to work further with you. Um, I'm not going to say anything because I am a secretive type with this whole thing, but there is something <laughs> big that Vonda has coming up. There this year. are big things coming. And uh, she, she blessed me with it. And um, it's a quiet thing. It's a very secret, but you know what? I'm really proud of her for um, doing what you're doing. And thank you again. It's um, follow, follow the hashtag one B seven. 
one B seven. One B seven. Number one. Number, number one, one. The letter B is seven. seven. Hashtag one B seven. Yep. See, you didn't tell me that. That is because Ula's mission is to impact positively impact a billion lives in the next seven years. Oh, that's cool. I like that. One billion lot. That's a lot of people. One, One billion, billion lives in seven years. seven years. Wow, what a goal. What a goal. That's an amazing so, goal. The hashtag oh, 1B7. Hashtag well, very good. Very, very good. Thank you again. Everybody, please tune in. Um, we are going to have this on our YouTube channel as well as um, on our podcast. And I appreciate your time and I appreciate you always sharing with me. And thank you so much. And hug all seven You're of welcome. those babies and those two kitty cats. I will. I was surprised we didn't get an appearance by them, but. Yeah, he was up here right before we started and then he went away. I don't know where he went. Okay. All right. Well, I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> see ya. All right. Y'all have a good evening and thank you so much. Bye. Bye.